ready start it is settled principle of law that the evidence of interested or related witnesses should be considered with caution and until and unless it is found to be trustworthy the conviction of accused on the basis of evidence of related or interested witness is not justified in view of the discussions made above and considering the unnatural conduct of pw1 and pw2 i am of the considered view that they are not proved to be eyewitnesses of the incident of enticing a victim by accused slash appellant in presence of co-accused persons or otherwise and their testimony is neither reliable nor trustworthy para in the present case the only eyewitnesses of the incident pw1 and pw2 are admittedly closely related witnesses and their conduct has been found unnatural in not disclosing and not helping the first informant the conduct of father of the victim in not lodging the fir and not appearing before the trial court for stating on oath that his daughter is missing and has been enticed away by the accused slash appellant with the help of other co-accused or otherwise and the conduct of pw3 slash first informant who himself is a law graduate and is also alleged to be an advocate in not mentioning the names of alleged eyewitnesses in the fir and lodging of fir with inordinate delay of four days at midnight without any whisper about the love affair if any between the victim and the accused slash appellant and further the undisputed disability of accused slash appellant makes the entire prosecution story highly improbable and doubtful and gives strength to the arguments that the father of victim and his family members including first informant on account of property dispute have falsely implicated the accused slash appellant and his family members due to suspicion para in view of the facts and circumstances of the case there is sufficient reason for drawing adverse inference against the prosecution for not producing the parents of victim to the witness box before the trial court the evidence on record shows that pw1 and pw2 were not the eyewitnesses of alleged incident of fetching the victim by accused slash appellant in broad daylight at 10 am instead of choosing some time of loneliness in the late evening or early morning and they have been set up subsequently in order to improve the case against the accused persons the above witnesses are interested witnesses and their unnatural conduct and contradictory testimony is not reliable for holding the accused slash appellant guilty and the learned trial court has misread the evidence on record i am of the considered view that the prosecution has failed to prove its case to the hilt beyond any shadow of reasonable doubt and has failed to bring home the charges against any of the accused by any cogent reliable independent and trustworthy evidence considering the totality of facts and circumstances it is a fit case where the accused slash appellant is entitled to be given the benefit of doubt and the prosecution case is liable to be rejected the accused slash appellant is also entitled for an order of acquittal para pw1 and pw2 are only chance witnesses and have also stated to have inquired into with 
co-accused as to where the victim and accused slash appellant have gone. But even when no reply was given by them, they did not inform the first informant or father of the victim, which is also quite unnatural and their conduct in not doing so despite being related makes their contention of being eyewitnesses doubtful and untrustworthy. Similarly, on alleged asking by PW1 and PW2 from Rajendra and others, not giving any threat by them is quite unnatural. While on mere inquiry by the first informant, they allegedly threatened him. The first informant has not assigned any reason when neither he was eyewitness of the occurrence nor got any information from alleged eyewitnesses, then why and on what ground he approached the family members of accused slash appellant that is co-accused persons for inquiring about the victim. Stop. Stop.